cover Prosperity Bank Shares, which is one of many of the bank stocks that has been uh, depreciated in price over the last couple of weeks and has since making a low has traded essentially sideways for the past couple of weeks. And it's a stock I'm looking at. I did not purchase it, but that isn't to say that if it doesn't come down some more that I won't purchase it or the, because I think in the long run, it'll be fine. And it's kind of nonsensical what's happened in the markets over the last few weeks because, you know, most people are abstract bigots, especially when emotions run high and what happens is they hear bank and then they just sell and they don't actually differentiate. And as much as people tell other people, don't judge a book by its cover, that's most definitely what people do. You know, you should judge the content of a bank by the loans it makes, not by the title bank itself. But that's not how humans conduct themselves, which has provided quite a buying opportunity for many of banks and will create a buying opportunity perhaps in the future. But I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. So Prosperity Bank Shares is a Texas primary bank and... I'm quite bullish the Sun Belt, and I'm quite bullish te Texas as well as Florida, and it's a derivative play of the economy growing because as economies grow, banks get a piece of the pie, and consequently, if they manage things correctly, they too can also become beneficiaries of the migration. They have 272 banking centers all together, and you can see that large part of their assets are in from Houston, from Dallas, and that's pretty good news. They're in the right place, in the right cities, in the right state. And one of the many concerns, now this is a little bit older, but one of the many, not too old though, one of the many concerns is deposit runs. And worse yet, the reason that there's a concern for deposit runs is because of the, the concern is, is how, what percentage of those deposits are FDIC insured. And the answer when it comes to Prosperity Bank, ticker symbol PB, the answer is over 50%. And if you recall to a few short weeks ago in which the media has in large part forgotten all about it, SVB, Silicon Valley Banks, were 97% not FDIC insured. So that's quite a disparity there. And it's quite interesting too as a side note to see all the panic and, and all the fear mongering and all the BS about the next banking crisis and the Lehman moment and Bear Stearns and... and savings and loan crisis, and just all the nonsensical garbage that people are so quick to devolve to. And I believe yesterday, and we continued it today, that the lows that were put in for the S&P due to the bank quote-unquote crisis was, has been recovered. We're now above where we were two weeks ago. So just a few things about Prosperity Bank shares. This isn't going to be some long video. And, and the reason is in part because I didn't pull the trigger. And I'll explain why in a moment. But the net, net income margin looking good. I thought it was 35%, but seemingly this site says 45%. The return on equity is 8%. You know, it's, you know whatever. Like that, that's, that's basic bank stuff. Uh, some of these banks are returning 15, 16% on equity. The return on assets is 1.4%. So, I mean, that, that's pretty decent. The return on assets is, is more above par than the return on equity. But the return on equity isn't horrible, but that's what you get with a bank. So, unless you really want to go out on the risk curve, or more so on the risk curve. Another concern with the whole... Silicon Valley Bank crisis was the unrealized losses on the hell to maturity 
investments in securities and their unrealized losses on the held to maturity portion of their portfolio is isn't the best, but it's also not the worst. It's not going to wipe out the equity because Silicon Valley Bank, I believe, was negative. They had negative equity. They had negative negative capital, bank capital. And most banks are not in that position. And Prosperity Bank shares is also not in that position. And unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, since they're below $50 billion in assets, there's a lot of information that other banking companies have to provide as well as supplemental information that makes it a lot easier because one of the cool things I actually like about Silicon Valley Bank is in their supplemental information, they actually had total shareholder equity and they calculated it for you and presented it. And, and it was, it was if, if you look for it, it was right there. Prosperity Bank shares as, as well as many of these other banks do not provide that supplemental information and, and unnecessary information like the liquidity coverage. They also don't provide that. I mean, you can go in and calculate it and so on and so forth. And I just ran some quick numbers, so I, I didn't provide the numbers. But nonetheless, they have positive equity, even once you recognize the unrealized losses. So since they're a Texas company, their loan book is vulnerable to things because they're trying to make money off of the growth of Texas reasonably enough. And as it says, approximately 79.9% of the company's total loans as of December 31st, 2022 consisted, consisted of loans including in the real estate loan portfolio with 29.2% in commercial real estate, including farmland and multifamily residential, 35.8% in residential real estate, including home equity, and 14.9% in construction, land development, and other land loans. Then it goes on to say, as of December 31st, 2022, commercial real estate, because that's the new big scare, that's the next leg to fall, which it actually might be, we'll see, is that banks are highly leveraged, especially the more smaller banks, or have a high exposure to commercial real estate. So it goes on to say that its commercial real estate loans total $8.10 billion. And put that in perspective, they have around $37 billion in assets. So what I was saying a moment ago was banks with more than $50 billion. So let me, let me speak this in inverse. Banks with less than $50 billion in assets are not required to complete the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System's report. They do not have to fill out an FRY 15 systemic risk report, which would be nice. And here's a chart of all the varying tiers and categories. The globally, on the left-hand column, you have the globally systemic important banks and that would be oh the big eight there will be a link in the description if you click on this the other slide in this link actually names those eight banks gold you know uh jp morgan bank of america so on and so forth and so we're in the far right hand column when it comes to prosperity bank which is unfortunate because they're allowed to opt out of the AOCI capital impact and they don't have to report on a lot of things. They don't have to report on the, uh, the high liquidity stuff. They don't, they don't have to report on their LCRs. They don't, they don't have to report on a lot of stuff. I mean, that, that, that's the whole point. I mean, we can get into the technicals and the acronyms and explain it and blah, blah, blah. And no one really cares. The, the point of all this is, is that they're flying under the radar. There's all kinds of stuff that 
a bank could report that they're not reporting. So trust but verify, do your due diligence, so on and so forth. They have a fantastic dividend history, which is incredible that during the great financial crisis, that not only did they not remove their dividend, not only did they not cut their dividend, but they actually grew their dividend. And that's just quite remarkable. I mean, that's very impressive. There's not a ton of banks out there doing such things. And by the way, that's one of the reasons, by the way, that's one of the reasons dividend history like this, not going largely out on the risk curve and, and performing reasonably well is why it's trading the way it trades. That's why it's down 20% and not 40 or 60 or 80%. And there's a few of these Texan banks that are trading at two to three times. I mean, there's a lot of banks actually that are still trading at two to three times book value. Right now, Prosperity Bank Shares is trading at, call it a 10, 11 PE, three and a half percent dividend yield and price to book at about 80 cents on the dollar, which is another reason why I was looking at it. I, I just can't pull the trigger. One of the reasons looking from a chart perspective, is, is you can see throughout the years that they normally have around a 30 to 40% drop. Right now, like I say, we're at a 20% drop. That's the bottom right-hand chart. Where will it go? I don't know. But to another chart, it topped out at $80. If it fell to $50, that would be pretty close in line with a 40% drop. Now, right now it's trading at $60, which means it would have to fall another $10, which roughly speaking, it'd have to fall another 15 to 20%. I would then be interested in buying it at that two decade, over two decade support line. And right now we're at about the middle line. And it very well could bounce. You could see there in, well, let's call it 2012, it kind of peaked its head at around $45 and then bounced off this green trend line. And then, you know, it, it, it didn't fall to the red support line for numerous years. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing, and that's, it's not the most attractive chart in the last, It's it's gone nowhere essentially in, seven years, actually 10 years. If you bought at $60 in 2013, you're at $60. Now you would have accumulated a, a dividend al along the way and fair enough, but it's just something to think about. So with that said, in the past week, I topped off some Transocean and I topped off some Kinross and I'm not really interested in topping off any more above this. So if it doesn't fall anymore, then I guess I'm stuck with the positions I have and Uranium bounced back. I'm up about six or 7% on the portfolio this week for this week, not for the month because I'm, at, I'm down for the month. I'm actually going to start at the end of the month reporting my monthly performance. January was like 15%. Last month was down one and a half percent ish. This month I'm down multiple percent. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say for now, but I definitely underperformed the S and P and definitely the NASDAQ this month, but that's okay. It is what it is. There's vicissitudes in the market and, and I'm not really too concerned about it, but I definitely, I mean, if you look at the portfolio a couple of weeks ago, Transocean was definitely much more in the red. Uranium was more in the red. Kinross was in the red. Uh, Tidewater was in the red. And, and here we are. So see what next month brings. It's the end of a quarter. And that's really all I have to say. Prosperity bank shares. You know, I, I kind of thought about, you know, if I had a dividend portfolio or something like that. I mean, there, there's other more stable like USB, I believe it is, or U US Bank. 
they fell, they're like 50% off their highs or something like that with a five, five and a half percent yielding dividend. I mean, if, if I had a dividend portfolio, which I don't, because ultimately I'd rather sit in the cash than buy the Prosperity Bank shares. I think that $60 in cash will serve me better in the coming one, three, five years than me purchasing the Prosperity Bank shares. And I think I'll have more conviction in whatever I deploy that capital into. Now, like I said, if it hits that green trend, red trend line at $50, that might be enticing. But I'm guessing something's happened in the overall market and other things like might look even more enticing. So value opportunity, always have to consider that. Not think of it in just an independent, absolutist sense, but think of it relative to other opportunities. Where's the best place to deploy the capital? So I, I, I'm not committing myself to buying it at $50, but I mean, obviously it'd be more enticing. I mean, it's kind of enticing here. If, if I had a lot more money in the cash reserves, I probably would deploy some capital into a share or two, but I don't. And I actually would like to build up my cash reserves. So with that said, thank you for watching and until next week.